have you ever been tempted to return to your corporate job when things are not going well? Absolutely tempted to go back. Um, I actually wrote about this pretty extensively in the book because this is something that does come up. And I, there were times I freaked out. I remember when I quit the first job and you know, you know, your mind gets primed for your direct deposit. Like you know that moment that cha-ching hits and hits the bank account and you kind of just know all the numbers make sense. Like it's a, you know, your monthly expenses are usually the same, all of that. So you kind of just know, you glance, you don't even have to look that carefully because you're like, yes, the round numbers are roughly where they're always supposed to be. So all is good. Imagine that first time you look at the bank account and you realize there was no direct deposit. Plus I got a little like notification that a direct deposit came in. That email didn't come in when it was supposed to. And I freaked out and I really thought about going back. And I, you know, one of the challenges is uh, when you get really distracted by that, by the money um, and those tendencies, uh, like to want to go back to that kind of um, paycheck, then you shift focus away from your reinvention. You actually delay the reinvention because you're not going all in on it. So uh, as I did the hard work to dig deep and try to figure out where that came from, um, and, and actually some of the discoveries came while I was working on the book, it was a lot of it was grounded in certain limiting beliefs that I had. And I didn't realize them until actually way, way later, mostly some of, some of which I discovered while I was writing the book. And one of them was that I, I saw, I saw um, no employment as unemployment. Like if I didn't have a job, that meant I was unemployed. And the, th the thinking behind that was that I, growing up, um, I didn't really know people who weren't working and that was okay. Like meaning like they, they were just taking some time off, like a sabbatical or, or maybe just like making a pivot or maybe shifting their focus to the family for a minute. Where I grew up, chances are like, you know, you were living paycheck to paycheck. And the research I did for the book, 54% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. That's a lot. And so when you're looking at that, you're just kind of like, wow. So if you don't have a paycheck, you got a problem, which means if you're not employed, then you're unemployed and unemployed means no paycheck. So that's a problem. And so that, that mindset, that belief, I should say, that limiting belief made it difficult for me not to be employed. And so when, the, when, when, when that was happening, when I was feeling that thought, then I wanted to go back. The temptation like, like skyrocketed and I wanted to go back to find a job. And of course, when you're feeling that kind of discomfort and pain, you start to do whatever it takes to erase that pain. Like, what can I do to fix that pain? I need something to fix that pain. Um, of course, sometimes we can turn to really bad things to do that, but I turned to job postings and I would just spend the day looking through job postings. Oh my God, I got to undo what I just did. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to back then at that point in time, but I did encounter this other time in life because I quit my job in 2008, just a month before the Great Recession started. And then the layoffs kicked off and then nobody was hiring. I was like, oh, well, now I can't even do that. But the desire was very strong to do that. The other limiting belief that I, I also uh, uncovered when I was doing the research for the book was that I tied um, my self-worth to salary. I thought salary determined how valuable I was, how good I was, how worth, worthy I was. So meaning like, you know, as my salary goes up, obviously I'm a better person. I, I'm more successful. I'm, I'm, you know, worth more. I'm more valuable to the world. I'm blah, 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 all these kinds of things. And I didn't realize that these are some of these, some of these limiting beliefs are kind of like hiding under a few layers. So they just creep up in interesting ways and they get you by, you know, keeping you looking for job postings or whatever. But these were the things that kind of drove the temptation to want to go back to work, to want to go back to getting my salary and say, no, I made a mistake. Undo this right now. Make the pain go away of, you know, this discomfort that I have because I felt, you know, like I wasn't worthy, like I wasn't worth as much, like I was a loser. I distinctly remember actually when I was doing the research for the book, actually thinking to myself when I didn't get that paycheck after a couple of months of not having it, like, wow, I'm officially a loser. And I was with uh, the woman who I got married to, um, my first wife. And I remember thinking, wow, I feel bad for her. Like she signed up to start dating me like, you know, however many months ago. And now she ended up with a loser. Like she didn't know that when she met me, when she met me, I had a full-time job, I had a salary, I had all these good things. And, you know, this sucks for her too. And I remember thinking that like, because, and I didn't know why until much later, but there was a link that I had in there that I had to break. I had to break that link along the way. And, you know, over time I was able to address some of these things, not always directly, because you're not always aware of what the core, the seed of that is. Um, but I definitely started chopping away at, you know, the plants, if you will, the stem. Um, and eventually I got to the root of some of these things so that I was able to address them. But that temptation definitely came up and, um, you know, uh, 
it, it distracted me for sure. But luckily, most of the time, I ended up not. I, I was able to, by having people, supporters, an entourage, a community, new ideas, new passions, new perspectives, new questions, having a community that can feed me those things, I was able to hang in there long enough to then, you know, get onto the next mini part of the journey, the next path, the next leg of the journey. And that kept me from going back to some of these jobs. That said, I still made mistakes along the way. I still took on some opportunities that I did more for the money than I did for the love of the thing. Um, and I realized it after so many months, I realized, oh my God, what did I do? I did it again. I, want, I went after the paycheck. I went after the money. And we all know when we do that, because in the moment you realize like, this sucks. Why am I doing this? I said yes to this. <laughs> I said yes to this. And we say yes, because we there was something else. And in my case, sometimes it was the money. It was, uh, it was tie- all those limiting beliefs. The way to fix them was to get more money. And so I would do those things. I would take on consulting gigs that I knew I didn't want to do, but they paid well. So I'm like, I'll do it. And then of course, while I'm in the middle of doing it, I'm like, oh, this sucks so much. Why am I doing it? It's keeping me from the thing I love, you know, like, and so, you know, live and learn through life. But I, I still make that mistake every now and then. And the only thing is I've gotten better at catching it and undoing it, you know, um, having the courage to break it when I can break out of it uh, and all of that, which by the way, included uh, to stop teaching at UPenn. I have a different role at UPenn now, but the teaching role, as much as I loved it, was um, holding me back from building the business because it was still like a salaried role. It was still keeping me in the employee mindset and I needed to break out of that. And I realized that, you know, I needed to say goodbye to that. So rather than delaying that decision, the first moment I had to break my contract because it was time for a new class to come in, I said, I need to have a conversation and I, you know, with the director and I did. And I said, I, I need to step away now. Um, and, you know, I, and I did it as uncomfortable and difficult as it was. Um, especially for the team, because I left them one faculty member shorter just a month before the next cohort came in. But they were understanding, you know, even though it was, of course, inconvenient, but they were understanding of why I did it. So I've gotten better at correcting that, you know, rectifying that when when I do recognize it. But yeah, temptation will be there. Well, we're glad that you made it to this leg of the journey. And you, you have gone back to your corporate job. <laughs> like that. And that you're still here, not in your yeah. corporate job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And, and, you know, and, and one thing that I'll say, because I, I had, when I went back to IBM back in 2016, when I, well, not back to IBM, I say back, but I mean like back to a corporate job when I went to IBM in 2016, one of the things that I had to come to terms with was, wait, am I giving up on the journey? Or like, what, what's happening here by me taking this job? And it wasn't giving up on the journey because the journey is not about leaving corporate. Um, there was actually nothing wrong with the first corporate job I had. I had some incredible managers and bosses and people that I worked for that were just incredible teachers and taught me so much and did so many things for me. But, you know, and, and so it's just that that work at that time was not aligned with my values, passion, and purpose. So I went towards something that was more aligned. When I went to work for IBM, the role that they offered me was incredibly aligned with my values, passion, and purpose. And so going back to that, it was not like, oh, no, I've given up. I've gone back to corporate. No, it was I'm going back. I'm going to a role that's aligned with my values, passion, and purpose. It may not be forever. And it turned out, you know, it was only four years. But you know what? In those moments, it was. And so it's, it's all about alignment at the end of the day. It's not about leaving, quitting. It's not about corporate or not corporate. Um, it's not about any of that. It's not about working for a major institution or not working for a major institution. Um, it's not about that. It's simply about staying aligned. There's nothing wrong with a corporate job. There's nothing wrong with the field of medicine. There's nothing wrong with any of these things. As long as it's aligned with what matters to you, what, what gives you fulfillment. Um, and that changes over time. We grow, we develop, values evolve, passions change, purpose evolves. Um, and so it's important that we find ways to stay aligned. And, and that might mean leaving a career that once upon a time was a dream career, the dream job. But as we change, maybe it's not so dreamy anymore. It's dreamy for somebody else, you know, who is, you know, who, for them, that's aligned with their values, passion, and purpose. And so sometimes we do have to move away from those things. Um, easier said than done, but it's, again, the, the point here, it's not about corporate or not corporate or anything like that. Um, it's simply a matter of alignment and making sure that you're doing something that gives you fulfillment. 